video is intended to serve as a guide for thinking about social and economic issues. I will use it to respond to videos who I think have no decent methodology in their thought. If this video appears as a response to one of yours, your homework is to watch it, evaluate your proposition according to its models, and I think you will often be surprised at the outcome. The basic model I wish to propose is that of cost-benefit analysis. If one is evaluating whether to do option A, one adds up the costs, adds up the benefits, subtracts the former from the latter, and proceeds with option A if the answer is positive. Take the example of speed limits. We can show that reducing the speed limit on a busy road will reduce the incidence of collisions by 10 collisions per year. The average cost of a collision is $1 million in insurance, road cleanup, and legal and medical costs. Therefore, the benefit per year is $10 million. However, it will make 500 drivers per day late for work by an average of 10 minutes. The average wage in the United States is in the region of $30 per hour, so that makes a daily loss of $2,500 and a yearly loss of $912,500. Therefore, the net benefit of option A is $87,500, provided it costs less than that to put up the signs, it should go ahead. Now let's take an example that's a bit more challenging to think of numbers for. The legalization of cannabis. What are the benefits? Drug crime funds gun crime. We can estimate the amount of crime that $1 million of drug money creates and say that the benefit of taking cannabis trade off the streets will be the cost of that crime times the value in millions of the cannabis market. Another benefit will be the tax take on cannabis. You might argue that this is not a benefit because the benefit to the government is the same as the cost of the consumers. But the consumers would be paying the tax voluntarily. Choosing to pay a tax implies that you get more benefit by paying it than not paying it, so the net benefit to the consumer is strictly positive. Therefore, we get to include tax duties on cannabis as part of our analysis. But what about the costs? We can't count harm to the individuals concerned because they are choosing to consume cannabis. If they're choosing it, they must prefer it. If they prefer it, their net benefit of consumption is strictly positive. We can count social externalities, however. Consuming cannabis may cause individuals to be less productive. And these costs go into the model because society cannot choose whether or not to lose that production. The decision to legalise cannabis should therefore be made on the basis of whether the benefits of reducing crime and increasing the tax take outweigh the costs of reduced productivity, and we can provide empirical evidence to come up with numbers that reflect these costs and benefits and therefore make an informed decision. Notice some things that we didn't include in that analysis. We didn't include the cost of people being morally outraged by the smoking of cannabis. Why not? Because the state should not second-guess what its citizens think. Ultimately, it is your choice to be outraged or accepting. And remember, if you choose to be outraged, you must prefer to be outraged, and therefore the net benefit of you being outraged is still strictly positive. Now, let's consider an example that's even harder to conceive of monetizing. Gay marriage. What are the benefits? Imagine there are a million gay people who would like to be married and have a reciprocally willing partner. The benefit would be one million multiplied by the amount by which they prefer to be married good number for that benefit might be the average cost of a wedding and a honeymoon minus the average cost of a regular party of similar size plus a regular holiday for two. That gets you the bare minimum amount by which people prefer to be married. Now what are the costs? Infinite, say the Christians, because they'll be damned to hell. I say, no, the individual's concerned are making a choice, and if they think they'll be damned to hell and still get married and then choose to do it, then their expected net benefit must still be strictly positive, just like the cannabis smoker who knows they are harming their health. If the Christian then says that the gay couple are ignorant, I would ask the Christian to present empirical evidence that correlates gay marriage with eternal hellfire, and would happily present that evidence to gay couples prior to getting married to address the imperfect information externality. There are in fact no costs here, and gay marriage should go ahead. Now this model as I have presented it has important limitations. One is equity. Going back to our drivers, is it fair to save 10 drivers from crashing by making 500 drivers late for work every day for a whole year? You could argue that since they chose to drive knowing they might crash, their benefit should be discounted. Equally, you could argue that those who choose to drive to work know the risk they might be late. The optimal solution might be to build a railway as well. The second is scope. Ideally, the drivers should get together and agree amongst themselves to reduce the speed limit. However, their employers arguably bear the cost of them being late, so they should be invited too, as should all their friends and relatives. In fact, given knock-on effects, absolutely everyone in the world should be invited. Now that is the function of a democratic nation-state. Now, for anyone I've used this video to respond to, I want you to carefully consider your ideas in the context of this model. If you want further explanation of why I think you're wrong, please PM me. Before you go making social or economic prescriptions in the future, think about them, and I mean really think about them. Research them, get some numbers, and do the maths. If you need help, ask me. I'm an economist. It's what I do. People are not rigorous enough in their thinking. They need to be.